Today's adventure brings us to Sherman Oaks, California, inside this former sports authority is a pop-up exhibit that's taking place throughout the entire month of August 2018, and it's now open to the general public. Van Eaton Galleries presents That's from Disneyland, a pop-up exhibit and auction. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. The thing that's most exciting about this is this could quite possibly be the biggest collection ever of old school Disneyland artifacts, at least one that I have seen and will be able to peruse, walk around, and document. It is from one man's personal collection. He has decided over the years that it's just time to get rid of most of it. And that's what's behind these walls. Let's go check it out. Join me. Shall you? As you can see, the appropriate font lining the building, as well as these huge banners. And I am not the only one with this idea today. There is a little congregation of people waiting to get in. What better way to start off than with the submarine voyage sea serpent? Look at the sheer size of this thing. Possibly the most iconic portion of the attraction which was used for 30 years before it closed in 1998. Now if you were to take this thing home, I have to admit, where would you where would you put this? In your living room? Just to give some perspective, the sign is 18 feet long, which just goes to show how long the slithering serpent is. And this would definitely bring back some serious memories. If you had this mermaid in your household, you could just go back to yesteryear when you used to ride the ride. One of several that could be seen gathered around piles of treasure. Submarine voyage animatronic mermaid from 1959. Plenty of artwork and photos as well. And let's not forget ride vehicles. Peter Pan's flight there on the right, the Matterhorn bobsled in the middle, and Snow White Scary Adventure there on the top left. That is so freaking cool. Snow White window display figure from the 1970s, and the witch right next to her. These are, these are definitely some antiques. Something you don't see. Definitely don't see these every day. Go Greyhound ad promoting Los Angeles over Anaheim. Usually in this day and age you would see Anaheim instead of LA just because Disneyland is about you know 25 miles south of the city. This is from Florida Walt Disney World Fantasia Gardens which closed according to the sign in 1996. You can see this broom is working hard dumping water from point A to point B. $75,000 is the estimated worth. Oh my goodness. That's a, you gotta have a big checkbook. You gotta have a big checkbook for that one. However, it would be quite the conversation. Oh my gosh. I see Mr. Toad. Mr. Toad car. Even the devil himself, Beelzebub. He's going in, he's, he's looming overhead. Some items you are allowed to sit on or in. This chair is not one of those items. Check out the painting up there and the clock telling time, ticking to and fro. And this was also from WDW, this fiberglass little devil with his pitchfork circa 1970. Oh yeah, I remember you. You haunted my nightmares for so long as a child. It's good to see you again though. I'm, I'm gonna bury the hatchet, or in this case, the pitchfork. Nailed it. My favorite thing about this picture is the worker over here 
you know, putting something away or taking something off the chair while I'm reliving my childhood. Gracefully reliving my childhood. This once danced around the outside of the clock here in California. It's a small world after all. Once you get it in your head, you cannot escape it, ever. Used in a parade float, not on the attraction, all of these dolls could be seen going down Main Street USA at one point, most likely singing that, that catchy jingle. For a cool hundred grand, Dumbo here could be yours. Anywhere from 100 to 150 grand. You know, just the price is negotiable. It is an auction, by the way. Used at some point in or around the 1960s. I'm just window shopping. I'm just window shopping today. I should rephrase, these are just approximate values. You know, an auction starts off low and could go higher. But man, these are, these are some sweet relics to say the least. It's closing, it's closing automatically. I will lower it for you. It's a doom buggy. Mickey and Minnie are about to go on an exciting adventure. Probably the closest I will ever get to a haunted mansion pulsating door. It like pushes in and out. The pulsating door. I have passed one similar to these many times on both versions, east and west coast. Next to the door, oh yes, original stretch room portraits. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. As the elevator in the mansion descends, these portraits would stretch to reveal their full image. They eventually needed to be replaced because of the wear to the canvas. But from 1969 to 72, with imagery designed by Imagineer Mark Davis, they were hand painted while the later versions were printed. People mover behind that. One of the pods from the rocket jets. Whoa, Space Mountain. And yes, I, I noticed this, an old trash can, but Space Mountain vehicle and Here's a throwback. Rocket rods, anyone? Wow. I like the fact that there are items from both places. This is California, Disneyland. And this, from Walt Disney World, Florida, number 12. I have to wonder if I ever rode in this as a youth. This exact one, I mean. This did not last very long. It could be considered a fail, but at least we have the documentation of the vehicle and all the bells and whistles, well, parts of the bells and whistles that made it work. The rocket rods, short-lived rocket rods. Now I never got the opportunity to ride the Disneyland People Mover. I've ridden its counterpart on the East Coast many, many times and it is still quite operational but i must say this vehicle is in pristine condition for its age stating there it says doors are self-opening not allowed to sit in that one however space mountain and even back then they had the speakers on either side of your earlobes to give you the proper ambiance when you were careening through the solar system through space. Number nine, ready to blast off. Adventures through inner space, which was in Tomorrowland, this 1967, very rare Atom Mobile. A-T-O-M Mobile. As stated there, clever play on words, which you could view 
while waiting in the queue line. Look at that guy. It's almost like a doom buggy, except it's painted blue. Clever touch to this pop-up along the poles are some of the former parking area signs. There's many Tinkerbell, I loop back around. We got Happy, one of the dwarfs, Winnie the Pooh back there, and next to the escalator, King Louie. I've always had a big interest in the TWA Moonliner. I could see myself owning something like this, or this perhaps, this poster. Fly TWA, got the castle down there, and the train station underneath it. Very rare plaque created to celebrate the grand opening of Space Mountain, 1977. There is a heck of a lot to look at. Inclement weather, rocket jets will be grounded. Make sure that you slide to the rear of the rockets. This is like sensory overload through here. It's divided into each proper section, which honestly is probably the best way to go because experiencing all this all shoved into one area really would not make sense. There is just so much to see and to take in. We got Alien Encounter and some Star Tours promotional materials. It's really hard to believe that Star Tours has been open as long as it has. Oh, who remembers these? You could go to Indoor or Tatooine. Travel posters, circa 1986 Progress Land model, circa 1964 from the World's Fair, which eventually became Carousel of Progress that we are familiar with at the parks. How cool is that? There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Oh, when is this scenery done? My siestas are getting shorter and shorter. Hey Michael, me amigo, pay attention, it's Joe time. Let's That's Jose. You don't realize how big these canoes are until you're standing beside them. Of course, you would grab a paddle, you would board inside. Oh, watch out for this guy. I think he wants to take a canoe trip on the rivers of America. Maybe one of the sweatiest experiences and the biggest workout you can get visiting the park. For just a nickel, you can get a Bear Country postcard. Half a dime. I'm not even kidding, look at this. Five cents. Drop the coin in there, and it would spit out a little Country Bear Jamboree goodness right through those slots. After they changed the name from Jamboree, it turned into Country Bear Playhouse before they removed it. And now Winnie the Pooh sits on the same area. Plastic toy raft. That would definitely make bath time fun. An explorer's map of Tom Sawyer Island, a Fort Wilderness wooden flagpole sign, and Big Thunder Ranch holds a special place in my heart. I loved it before they you know, a couple years ago, they got rid of that whole area. This sign, however, predates my memories. Circa 1986, large wooden entrance sign. It's pretty much now Big Thunder Trail, which is gonna be leading to the new Star Wars Land area for all the Walt Disney World viewers out there. In the early 90s, you may or may not have got a delicious ice cream as it moved up and down Main Street USA. We got Louie, we got Dewey, and I'm gonna probably place my bets and on the other side, wamp, wamp, wamp. Where is he? The Main Street windows are very popular. Even today, this is a Cinderella display from 1970. He's trying to get that shoe on. 
I don't think it's going to fit. Got to be honest. I don't think I don't think it's going to fit on her foot. Kind of wish some of these items were still available for sale. Playing cards, a color by numbers oil set, the sweet hat. Ooh, even a even a gun with some darts there. Fantasyland coloring book. A lunchtime eating tray, bubble bath. Man, look at these little teeny tiny figures. Those could definitely get lost or make for a very painful step for a parent to take in the middle. Like, kind of like a Lego. When you step on a Lego, I just step on one of those. Ooh, that would hurt. Global Van Lines moving truck was a Main Street landmark appearing in many postcards, countless photos, and home videos. The early Disneyland vehicle was created by Imagineer Bob Gurr. And here it is, on site, right before my eyes. It left the park in 1979, but there's a photo of what it looked like back in the good old days. In case you didn't know, Global Van Lines is the choice of fussy people. I never knew that. Aerial photo from 1972. You can see it's grown a lot since those days. And even more to prove that fact is this one from 1961. You can see all parking lot there where Disney's California Adventure now sits. There's Disneyland. That's where the Esplanade now is. And DCA would be right about there. Oh, how things change. Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, the center point of the family room. You could see this organ until 1999. Once Tarzan came in and changed the name, this was no longer needed. But that, that is pretty awesome. Put your token in the Safari Adventure remote control box and you could guide this around, this little miniature full of guests. At your own leisure, you were the skipper. Well, kinda, sorta. The remote skipper. Miniature remote skipper, or something. If this humongous D looks familiar, it's because it sat atop the Disneyland Hotel for a heck of a long time, and it is illuminated here in this building with the sweet red neon. That thing is massive and color coordinated beside it about halfway up from the ground to the top is a life preserver from the hotel as well this is the complete set of individual models that they used to sell up until 2012 i don't know if i've ever seen it completed i've seen the individual pieces on their own, but this is all linked together like a beautiful puzzle. Best angle is the way Walt himself would have wanted it, entering the gates through the front, ducking underneath the train station, looping out next to the flagpole and walking down Main Street, USA. Starting back in 1955, you could mail a letter or a postcard from the park, and this is the original mailbox. The first one. Check that out. Operated from 55 all the way up to the early 90s. It got a lot of use. I moved to Central Florida in 1991 and would venture out to the Pleasure Island area. This is just a couple years before my time. 1989 to 1990. Yeah, so just a handful of months earlier, I could have seen this very piece of wood designated the entrance to Pleasure Island, which is no longer operational. Stepping back in time to the early 2000s, let's check the prices of daily admission and annual passes. An AP, $99 special offer, or the premium for $199. If you want to do just a one day, $33, two day, 57, or a three day pass, 
79 bucks. It's gone up just a little bit since then. Used to promote the Dutch Boy exhibit in Tomorrowland is this pop-up. It's like a 3D effect. Well, it's just basically cardboard that like pops up, but it gives a 3D effect. Just about every era and year map that you can think of. But I wanted to point something out. It's always been a bit of controversy if the Magic Kingdom is in Florida or in Anaheim. It's in both. Disneyland was Walt Disney's original Magic Kingdom and can be seen on a lot of promotional paraphernalia from back in the day and occasionally you see it current day. So there are two Magic Kingdoms, the original and the Florida version. Lots of items in this display case, but one I really want to point out is this thing called a picture gun themed around Adventureland. It's made by Viewmaster. You would look at like Viewmaster cards through there. Of course now, nothing like this is even allowed to be sold on property. Below the carousel sign is Dumbo grasping the feather tightly. And there's Timothy up top. This was used as a store display up until around the year 2000 or so. In 1983, this model of the Evil Queen as the old hag was used in the refurbishment. The Imagineers would create these first before they tackle the changes to the ride. It's all stated on these information pamphlets below each product which is nice because I know a lot about Disney, but I don't know every little detail, so these help a lot. I'm about to get my photo inside an original Skyway bucket. During the first few years of the attraction, the Skyway used unusually shaped rounded buckets, but from 65 and on till 94, these rectangular buckets could be seen ferrying passengers across the park. Mission accomplished. I must say I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked to be inside that thing. That very Skyway bucket went through the Matterhorn countless times. Kind of sad those don't exist anymore. As I look around, I keep noticing stuff I didn't see the first time like this Tiki Room flower boat hanging from the ceiling. They're not making any noise, they're resting. They've earned their rest after years of activity. It's time to rest, fellas. It's time to rest. Mark Twain. In the 60s, this hung aboard the ferry boat. And for half the price this approximately is going for, you could walk away with this pennant 1955, opening day, Frontierland. And I don't know if there's room in my kitchen to replace my current trash can with this, but that's very tempting. And why does it want me to waste? It's asking me to please waste. I don't, that doesn't make much sense. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad vehicle lantern prop that was used for many years. And these are similar to Lincoln Logs, except they're called Frontierland Logs. Lots of different pieces and toys that I still wish were available. And look how extremely stoked this guy is riding in the log on Splash Mountain. Look at that, he's like, yeah, I'm going down the flume. That's original concept art for promotional material for Splash Mountain. Look at that guy. For only a buck, you used to be able to get a magic book. Look at that. I never knew that existed. And there is a miniature of my all-time favorite pirate from Pirates of the Caribbean. He's near the end before you go up to Waterfall because he doesn't know the words to the song. He just sings, la, 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 la. I always liked that guy. This headwear is pretty fantastic. Space Mountain. And look up here. Flying saucer with Goofy on it. You know, that, that guy could never fly straight. You know, he just throws it and it just like kind of goes around like a boomerang almost. Press preview ticket 
for opening day, July 17th, 1955. Parking was a quarter, and you needed these tickets to board the railroad. If you were hired as a cast member in 1977, you were given this booklet, as well as information on how you were supposed to keep and comb your hair. Financial statement, 1954, the prior year before the park opened. And this is a sponsor packet a couple years later, 1958. This is pretty clever. Right underneath the Sports Authority weekly ad section, they've created these drummer seeking band. I'm excited to play with you. He has his own equipment. This guy looks very familiar. These are these are pretty neat how they created all these. Vocal lessons there, you got the tiki room bird and Doc's discount plastic surgery. I don't know what's going on, but there there is a reward for this lost dog and employee of the month. That's him right there, August 2018. That's gonna do it for today. The pop-up exhibits that's from Disneyland, and I must say, I don't think there will ever come a time in my life or you watching vicariously that you will see the glorious amount of relics when it comes to Disneyland, Walt Disney World, one man's personal collection that he is parting with under one roof ever again. I have seen a few of those items, you know, at D23 and in certain other areas, but never conglomerately in one section the magnitude of what's inside this structure was absolutely incredible i'll put the link to their website down below for those who do not live in the los angeles area but if you do live near la sherman oaks to be exact come down here and check it out before the end of august 2018 because after then everything will be sold and it will be erased from existence if you're new here please subscribe helps keep you in the loop on future endeavors, adventures I will be going on, and uploads that will happen on this channel. And ring that notification bell. Take the extra step. Keeps you in the loop. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. of emergency I have a candlestick so I can see in case the lights go out and if anyone sneaks up on me I have a hatchet I am well prepared in the haunted mansion